please, you always knew that man and mystery. My clipboard has gone missing, so I'm instead using this clamp on a piece of wood. Fan mail, Friday, Q&A. Lovely. Not a whole lot in the way of advan- uh, not a whole lot in the way of announcements. Uh, Jared's Epic Nerf Battle is in two weeks. The PSU HVZ is two weeks after that. Gonna be a lot of travel. Gonna be a lot of fun, though. Here we go. Peyton Hughes. What do you think of handmade melee weapons? Do you make any other than using pool noodles? I think they're awesome, and yes. Yes, I do. Nerf War Machine. Did you see the Vader fan film? I've seen a couple. I'm not sure if I've seen the one you're talking about. Send me a link. The Green Mesa. What is a quote you live by? There are two quotes that I'm very fond of that kind of uh, sum up my view on the world at this point in my life. Both of them are from the webcomic XKCD. The first is that I refuse to pretend that fun things are no longer fun just because I'm older. And the other is that we're adults now, which means we get to decide what that means. Both of which I feel really sum up the, a lot of my, you know, philosophy behind Nerf. Of Nerf is fun. It's fun to play with Nerf. And nothing anybody says will ever make me think otherwise. Same with roller coasters and comic books and all of those things that were fun when we were kids. They're still fun now. You don't have to pretend you don't like them just because you got older. That's ridiculous. And uh, anybody telling you that, well, that's not an adult thing to be doing, you're an adult. If you're doing it, it's an adult thing to be doing. That's how it works. So never let anyone tell you you have to give up the things that you enjoy. Raven and Jolt. True love or a space Gundam? Well, I've been in love once, so I'm going to go with the space Gundam. Johnny Blaze. What is your favorite medieval castle? Uh, Carcassonne. It's kind of a walled city, but I would qualify. I, I would call it a castle. I've been there, it's fabulous, I love the board game, and I will go back someday with much better company. Mm. The Wacky Nerfer. Are you part Russian? Not that I know of. I am a general European mutt. Uh, German, French, Italian, Norwegian, Scottish. But as far as I know, no Russian. Could be wrong though, I've never actually taken the, the test. I have one, it's been sitting in my car for like two years now. <laughs> I should take that and mail it in. Joshua Robles. Do you think a semi-auto, small form factor, flywheel-powered Vortex Blaster would fare well on the market? I think it would have fared very well when Vortex came out and it was very popular, but at this point, I doubt it. Vortex just isn't that great of an ammo type, especially in the mod community, though we are a relatively small fraction of the community. Um, but that would be something that I think would potentially bring it back. I would love to have one because everywhere I've ever played, uh, Vortex ammo has certain advantages, uh, namely that ricochets always count with Vortex, or they should. Everywhere I've ever played, they do, and I feel that they definitely should. So you can shoot them around corners and trees and down hallways and stuff like that. So I would love to see one. I, I don't know how well it would fare. I'm not an economist. Space Soft. Favorite sci-fi monster? I would go with the Xenomorph 2, just because they're absolutely terrifying. Uh, that was one of the, the big monsters from my childhood, because of course that's when that came out. I remember seeing the original Aliens and it giving me nightmares. Um, and I love a lot of the, the crossover comic books. Obviously Aliens vs. Predator was the coolest, but they actually had a lot of superhero uh, and alien crossovers that were actually all very interesting. Jacob B. Are black and orange your favorite colors, or just the colors you chose to be your colors? Uh, kind of the kind of both. Uh, black was always pretty much my favorite color before, because uh, the blood doesn't show. Um, but I ended up going with black and orange for my color scheme in Nerf, not on uh, really intentionally, um, but more uh, uh, simplicity. Uh, I was going to go with an all yellow loadout because I had. Um, uh, a, a Spectre and a Barricade and a Stampede, all of which were end strike yellow. Uh, I then attempted to get a hold of, of a Barrel Break. Unfortunately, the one that I got was clear green instead of yellow. And I didn't like the clear green. It didn't match the rest of the stuff. So I painted it black, poorly, but I painted it black. 
other than all of the orange bits. And um, then decided to paint all the rest of my blasters to match, and that's how I ended up with orange and black, and uh, I like it. Now I'm shifting more and more towards primarily orange with black accents for, you know, reasons of not scaring the populace. Um, and it, I, I like it, the gear-up colors, the fact that they made um, both a, a Rapid Strike and an, an Alpha Trooper in gear-up colors pleases me to no end. I just need to add a little bit more uh, black or a little bit more orange in various places because they, they put a little more white in there than I would have liked but uh, that pleases me because those are two very good blasters and I'm looking forward to tinkering with both of those eventually uh, but now it's rapidly becoming my favorite colors just because I really like both of those colors so it wasn't before but it kind of is now uh, hopefully that answers your question Joshua B again are you going to make a falcon eventually probably Probably. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, so close. No! Laser Ray 1. Do you plan on obtaining an FDL 3 from Project FDL? Someday? Someday, right now, I don't have enough of a use for it because I don't play in any games where something that powerful is uh, any advantage whatsoever. Um, and they're expensive. And I'm trying to save up money to buy a house. So probably not until after I have my own place. And by then, they'll probably be up to the FDL 5. So who knows? Evander Nugent. How do you feel about the Leviathan Axe from God of War 4? Never heard of it. Never seen it. Know nothing about it whatsoever. But I like axes, so I probably like it. Reeve Davis. What do you think about using an umbrella to use as a shield? I've seen it done, and I actually really like the idea. I used to have a really nice umbrella. It uh, The handle was a sword, and it uh, had a, a strap so you could carry it over your shoulder. Um, and unfortunately, it got stolen, which is just tragic, because I loved that thing. Uh, but I should I should get something to replace it. Something that has like a pistol grip, kind of. Um, or, you know, something that perhaps isn't actually intended to be an umbrella, but deploys the same way so it's actually flat instead of curved, because that would be more useful. But uh, I like the idea. Mephiston. Have you ever played... Er, Mephiston. Have you played many tabletop RPGs? Yes, I played a great deal of Dra Dungeons & Dragons back in college. Uh, we played 3-5 and Pathfinder, and then I also played some GURPS from time to time. But uh, I haven't played any other than that. I, I did play one homebrewed game that was kind of weird, but it was vaguely D&D-esque. Uh, don't play any currently. I was in a, 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 a Pathfinder game for a while, but uh, ended up just not having time and taking it off the list of things. <laughs> CTB Polar Flare 913. Does the Zombie Strike Quadrot have a shotgun potential or good power upgrades? No idea. I haven't actually gotten my hands on one. I've heard good things about it because it is direct prime and could, given the size, it could probably take a very heavy spring. Probably K26. We'll find out. But really, I haven't come across a smart AR system that shotguns well. The the way the Smart AR system redirects air tends to make it so one barrel gets all of the power and the others get none. Um, unless you gut it completely and redirect the power evenly, which isn't going to be easy in that because they're, you know, stacked on top of each other. You might be able to do what we used to do to the uh, rough cut, which is get it so that it fires the top two and then the bottom two. That wouldn't be too difficult and would have more potential, I think, to work. Um, two at a time, you'd probably have better luck than trying to fire all four. Uh, so, yeah. Nefomp47. Do you remember Rodimus Prime? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. As a child of the 80s, I was, like everybody else, traumatized by the tra Transformers movie. Um, and, yes, I remember Rodimus Prime opening the, the Unimatrix and saving them all. Poor Ultra Magnus. I had such high hopes for him. Jackalblade 9. Have you ever heard of the band Abney Park? Heard of them? I've seen them in concert, live, at uh, 
Steam Con. Many, many years ago. It was lovely. Love them. Good stuff. Yannick, any future cosplay goals slash ideas? Yes. Patrick Turtle. Would you build the Lego Death Star in a video if it was sent to you, or would you keep it in the box? I don't keep Legos in box. I never understood that as a thing. Uh, it makes absolutely no sense to me. The purpose of a Lego set is to be built, so to buy it and never even open it defies the whole purpose of it. If you just want a picture of the set, you can download that online, print it out, tape it to a cardboard box, and put it on your shelf. Uh, keeping the Lego inside it is just absurd to me. I do not understand it at all. And finally, Dustin Bergen with two questions. Which do you think would be easier to use in an HVZ as a primary stock? A Stampede or a Rapid Strike? Not sure what you mean by easier. Um, either of them would work perfectly well. They A stock, they both have relatively low rates of fire. The Rapid Strike is obviously higher than the Stampede. Uh, which is uh, an advantage and a disadvantage. Uh, the, the advantage of the Stampede is that you can easily semi-auto fire. You pull the trigger and it will fire once. And that is true of the Rapid Strike as well. You pull the trigger slightly and it will fire one time. Uh, the Rapid Strike has a higher rate of fire, which means you can potentially go through ammo faster and waste a lot of ammunition. It's also Flywheel, which has its own issues in... Um, HVZ in that you have to rev before you can fire and if you should forget or if the rev time doesn't you know isn't good enough or if you rev and fire too quickly you can jam it you don't have any of those disadvantages with the stock stampede um, I would go with the stock stampede but then you know how I feel about stampedes so that shouldn't surprise anybody question two what do you think of a thunder blast master key on a rapid strike I think that would be fantastic um, I did it on a raven the only thing, the only disadvantage of the Rapid Strike... Well, no, that, I think that would actually look pretty cool. Uh, the, the one thing I don't like about the Thunder Blast is that the pump has, you know, a, a vertical grip, which on something like that ends up hanging really low and looks kind of goofy. Um, I replaced the pump on my, on the one that I built for my Raven with one from a Demolisher, and it solved that problem. You could also just cut the handle grip off, but I didn't want to do that, so... Yeah, oh, that was my thoughts. Now you know how I feel. Ha! 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 Gotcha! All right, I have mountains of packages. I suspect some of them are late birthday presents. I've also been sent some stuff for... Who's responsible for this? Um, so let's, let's get into the loot. Pillage! Then burn! All right, let's see what you amazing people have sent me today. I didn't get any letters, which is sad because I love getting letters, but... I got mountains of packages. Let's see what we got. We're going to take a look at this thing. It's a sling. Um, I think it is some manner of fancy 2.3 point, 2.5 point, 2 point, 9 point. I don't know how it works or what it is. But somebody sent this to me. I'm sure many of you know what it is and can tell me, which would be lovely, because, as I said, I don't know what this is, or how you're supposed to properly use it, how you actually properly sling it, how you properly adjust it. Somebody let me know what this is and link me a video on how you use it, and I will do a review on it. Because I know I talked about um, slings and the ones that I preferred, and everybody gave their preferences, and as I suspected, there was, you know, people were like, Ah, oh, I would only ever use two. No, three is the best. 1.5! And whatever. Uh, whatever works for you is what you should use. And I would love to figure out how this is supposed to work because I'm sure I've got blasters that would work really well on. So, let me know what this is, who sent it, because there was no no explanation, no note. But that is super cool. Alright, pretty sure this is a t-shirt. Sent to me by Inktail. I got an email asking me, what did you think of it? I'm going, I don't know who you are or why I've been sent this. But I love getting t-shirts, so... I don't... I'm... I'm... Apparently I ordered it? No. Aha! From Mischievous Foam 22 In appreciation to your contribution to the Nerf community, also have a happy birthday. If you would like to mention, shirts can be purchased at inktail.com slash mischievous foam. Well, there you have it. Mischievous foam. Check them out at Inktail. 
The Foam Depot. Foam spelled like home instead of like foam. I'm sure Home Depot would have something to say about their logo being ruthlessly, ruthlessly appropriated, and I like it. That is really, really cool. It's also largely in my colors. That's neat. The Foam Depot. It isn't how you spell foam, is it? No, no. Anyway, yeah. Well, that is super cool. Thank you. I will wear this to events and whatnot. Ooh. This could be my official auxiliary supply officer t-shirt for when I'm doing supply stuff. Very cool. Check them out. Get some stuff. All right. Random package number one. Could be anything. Sounds fragile. So this contains a new version of the Grenader. Not really a, gr a, a new version, but an update. It now has a thumb screw kit, so you can easily adjust the time just by twisting the thumb screw. And it also now comes with replacement O-rings. Uh, they also sent me a couple of other things that I'm going to review and probably give away, because they're not something that I particularly have any use for, but some of you guys might really like. So, stay tuned for that, potentially. What's next? A box. Someone sent me a box. Oh, the note's sticking out. Salutations, Captain. Hope the day finds you well. So far it has. It's, a, it's been a good Thursday. I know you think I film these on Friday, but I don't. I film them on Thursday, so I can upload them on Friday. So, uh, it's been lovely. Anyway. Enclosed, you will find my modified hammer shot list of mods on second page, as well as a few of the springs which give it its power. If it isn't asking too much, would you please run it through a chrono? Mostly wanting to make sure that it's usable in most games. Also, if you have any suggestions for ways that I could improve the performance of the blaster, I'd love to hear them. I'm also sending you a modern Mega Constructs figure. Knowing how you enjoy Lego and things that are modular, you may get a kick out of it. Anyway, I really enjoy the videos. Thank you for doing what you do. I look forward to seeing you at an event sometime in the future. Jay. All right, here are the list of modifications. Well, let's get this open and take a look at it, because I'm curious. Some, oh, good lord, thems are fairly beefy looking. Hmm. They look short, though. How, I was, I'm curious how you actually set that up. All right, and here we have, oh, that is a beautiful paint job. Look at that. Shiny. Oh, that is, oh, who's your ha? Yeah, yeah. That is a good prime. I'm gonna go, I'll go chrono it. Give me a second. All right, well it had a low of 70 and a high of 101, which is amazing out of a hammer shot, quite frankly. Uh, that is fabulous. The, the difference was mostly the, the ammunition because I just grabbed a variety of random ammo because that's what you're gonna end up using at most events after a while when you get down to um, scavenging, unless you bring just an absurd amount of ammunition. So figure out which ammunition works the best in it for you and run with that. As far as upgrades, um, I really like expanded um, cylinders. Uh, the 7 or the Gavin Fuzzy 8 are really, really nice. They also tend to get a better seal on the dart, so it might actually improve the performance. Downside is some of them do, in fact, disable the AR, which can be potentially damaging to the blaster. So I didn't actually read your list of Updates, let's see. So, AR removed. Well, never mind then. Teflon tape on the uh, O-ring. Yep, yep. Padded the plunger head. Good idea. Applied white lithium grease to the plunger tube. Yep, yep. Added one of the enclosed spring. It fits fairly well over the st over the stock spring. So both are in the blaster right now. Uh, give it a schnazzy paint job. Yep, wrapped in hockey tape. Yep. Uh, as of right now, there isn't a name for the blaster waiting until I've been able to use her in a war. Well, this should definitely serve you very, very well. The only thing I would I would recommend, since you've already taken out the AR, is to get either a 7 or an 8 round cylinder because they, they do improve in performance a little because they've got a uniform seal on the darts and, of course, that increase the capacity. So, isn't going to alter any of the other performance, so I would highly recommend that. Um, there is a potentially less expensive option than the Gavin Fuzzy. I love his work. His work is beautiful and truly drop-in. I've never had a problem with them, um, but I, I was sent a couple to review a while back, and I haven't gotten around to it. I'm now waiting on springs. 
I ordered springs, but uh, my shipment from China got rejected at the border because it had a lipo in it. Uh, and they're, they're resending it with the lipo being sent separately. Hopefully they both get here this time. But I will then be able to give you a potentially much cheaper uh, source for a higher round cylinder, assuming it works out well. Because I'll be comparing them with Gavin Fuzzies and, and seeing how well they install and all of that. So, yeah, that is absolutely beautiful. That is gorgeous. I'm sure she will earn her name very soon. And these are fantastic because I have a boatload of hammer shots that I need to upgrade. And the fact that they just fit over it impresses me. That is why there wasn't any spring rattle. Because I thought that was going to be too short. And that you'd end up with a lot of spring rattle. But if the other spring is kind of holding it in place, that would solve that. So four of them. Fantastic. Excellent. Very, very cool. I will get that sent back to you as soon as I can. Awesome. All right. Next. What do we got here? I don't know. I got another For me, if I get to all, oh, I would plot if I get to keep this. I doubt it though. I can't imagine anyone would send me that. They probably just want me to review it. All right. Hey, ooh, Captain Xavier, this is the obligatory part of the letter where I let you know that I had handwritten this. It would be illegible due to my awful handwriting. <laughs> you should see mine. At least my broken elbow gives me a good excuse. I'll also apologize because I tend to get really wordy about stuff I'm enthusiastic about. I'm sure this will end up a bit longer than it really needs to be. I like to start out saying that your videos are my favorite YouTube or Nerf related YouTube or basically anywhere for that matter. There's just so much about your videos down to even how you're being you that makes them so much more relatable and familiar to an adult in the hobby like myself. As such, I've been working for a while on putting together a box of goodies to show my appreciation for the work that you put into helping everyone enjoy the hobby. I've individually wrapped most of these because some of them matter a little which order you open them. I'm going over everything in order either in the following section on this page or I'll cut the page and put the descriptions on the items. I haven't planned ahead to know yet. Package one. One, three, two, one. Package one. Part of my business is working with paracord, and another hobby I have is decorative knot tying. So I've decided to tie some paracord goodies for you. Give me the stuff! Come on! Ah -ha -ha. Sweet. <laughs> All right. Very cool. All right, so what do we got? Uh, X Strike themed pineapple keychain. I did not know that I needed one of these in my life, but I don't know how I got by without one now. This is so going on my gear. That is cool. Uh, which is tied from one orientation of two interwoven Turks head knots. Single pattern trilobite bracelet. Nice. Yup, yup, yup. He's managed to get a hold of some kind of paracord that... Yeah, he's got black and orange. They're different. All of them are different. Okay, these two are the same, but those are different. Okay. Uh, my preferred bracelet pattern, since I like the flatter, wider look of them versus the traditional survival bracelet look. Uh, named trilobite due to similarities to the shell of a trilobite. I really hope it fits well since I'm not used to making bracelets for people I can't test fit on. That is always a concern. And it is, unfortunately, a little bit too tight. I don't know what can be done about that, but that is, yeah, it's, it's about a half an inch, if not more, too tight for me. But that just means I will have to figure out something else to do with it. I'm sure 
I will come up with a use. Plots. I have plots. I have thoughts. So unfortunately means that one's probably going to be a little too loose as well. Double pattern trial of my bracelet. Similar to the one, but with a little trickier since it's two cords instead of one. As a result, the ends won't perfectly... Aren't perfect like I like them to be, but I hope the cool pattern makes up for it. Ugh. Yeah, unfortunately, that is also way too tight. I can I can get it on, but it, it needs to be about <laughs> at least an inch, maybe a half an inch looser. However. There's some potential there. Interesting. Those are super cool. Let me see. Yeah, yeah. Oh, those patterns are really, really cool, though. Yeah, yeah, I see the trilobite shells design. Yeah, shame they're a little too small. I don't know if there's anything that can be done about that. I'm pretty sure Paracord is very much designed not to stretch um, uh, and if yeah, if they can't be modified or altered I can definitely find ways to use them for other things to strap things to my gear I could definitely use it to loop things on like water bottles or, or uh, blasters or things like that love the patterns those are gorgeous and this this is going on my gear somewhere I don't know where but that is going on there somewhere all right Package number the second one. Ah. Oh, okay. Long story short, there was a pricing error in my favor, and I bought 15 marshmallow blasters. These are some of my favorite unconventional blasters due to the uh, breach, so I figured I'd send you one to enjoy. It's not orange and black, but I'm sure you can fix that easily enough. A couple things I've learned when modding them that I'd like to point out. The firing valve is actually self-regulating and will allow vent and will slowly vent excess pressure if you pump too high, like a built-in overpressure release valve. The pump has a bunch of dead space, and I recommend removing it for a new pump or other air solutions. And a three-quarter PVC bushing is the perfect size on the end of the tank, so you don't if you do ditch the pump. The tank volume with the stock pump is 250 milliliters, 50 milliliters more than a Titan, and 350 milliliters if you take out the pump and tube. The handle is woefully small for my oven mitten hands. Yeah, mine, mine too. Uh, but I'm sure, as I'm sure it is for yours, but I'm working on designing a replacement receiver and handle assembly for it for printing, hopefully using uh, an AR15M4 style grip mount for modularity there. Well, all right, let's take a look at this. Oh, look at that breech. That is a very different breech than the ones I've seen on previous marshmallow blasters. And that is a very different pump. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I will do... I will do things with this, sir. That is really cool. Yeah, it definitely needs a different handle. That is <laughs> ridiculous. Sure, it wouldn't be that diff difficult to design just a 3D printed one that just clamps over it easily enough. Or, obviously, integrate this into something else. It'd make a great master key. Other than that, that would be... Unless you had it go sideways... So it opens sideways and you load in and then lock it closed. I like it. I'm sure it wouldn't be too difficult to design a, a different front end, like a, a sledge fire front end that replaced this part, and then you'd have just a different... I don't know how difficult it would be to just modify that to take a sledge fire shell. Definitely huge amounts of mod potential there. Thank you very much. I didn't know this design even existed. What do we got next? Package number three. I know you love everything modular, and so I'm also a fan of options for my blaster, so my goal was to make 
as mu uh, it, much easier for someone to make this style of marshmallow blaster as modular as I could. I've sent you some prints of my parts I've designed to accomplish this goal since I thought you could put them to use. In this package you'll find A. So like I just said about uh, having replacements, he's apparently already done that. That is awesome. A printed breech replacement for one and three quarters inch PVC. This is printed breech that uses the screws from the stock breech in the blaster and it takes a three or one and th one quarter inch reducer bushing or stub of pipe to adapt it to your preferred fittings and your modular attachments. I don't know what's going on here. B. Oh, okay. I see what's going on here. This man is a genius. And I have underestimated him. So he has already made shells. Seven round shells. That is absolutely amazing. All right. Printed breech replacement for printed absolver shells and shells. Similar to the other breech, but this one is, significant, is specifically designed around a seven-shot absolver shell that I've designed to be printed. These shells were originally meant to fit into the uh, one and three-quarter inch fitting, but after accidentally shooting a shell itself at the wall, I decided the breech, a breech that kept the shell held in place would be a nice, safe option. The absolvers are printed and my poor printer has issues, so the dart fit isn't the best, but the Marshmallow Blaster doesn't care, and it'll fire him pretty hard anyway. Who knows? Maybe there's enough stuff here for a Marshmallow Blaster episode. All the files for these are available off my Thingiverse, uh, Thingiverse slash Donut Cat. That's awesome. As well as a few other designs I've been working on. Thing Thanks a bunch for everything you do for everyone, and I hope you get some fun out of these. Maybe a few tags on someone unsuspecting. I think everyone is looking forward to playing along with you at End War. Donut Cat. You, sir, you, sir, are awesome. So he printed me four shells for it. Uh, yes, there will definitely be a video about this in the very near future, testing it, comparing it to uh, my Mazooka, because I'm, I suspect this has some distinct advantages over it. Oof. That is amazing. All right then. That is some amazing stuff. These will be getting added to my gear one way or the other. They obviously won't be bracelets, but they are awesome, heavy, quick release straps. That is going on my gear somewhere. That is just how that is going to work. You, sir, are awesome. What do we got next? Uh, let's take a look at this one. From the auxiliary. But that's all we know. That is all the information that we have. Suspicious. Shiloh, you can split this off to your Lego channel. Lego and Nerf. Dude, you rock. Happy birthday. Everything inside has notes. Sky B. Oh, good lord. Oh, man. Creator. The race to build the board game. Bubbles. I did not know there was a Lego board game. That is ridiculously cool. Lego game pieces, not all the bricks are here, but I'm sure you can fill out the rest from your personal collection. Bonus, the instructions list all of the parts you need. I picked this up at a garage sale years ago, but now I need to be to pare down my board game collection, so have fun. That, sir, is awesome. And yes, I'm sure I can find, but let's see what we got here. From a Kickstarter for the game called Munchkin. I love Munchkin. If you know it, cool. If not, your viewers will be yelling at their screens. A Lego collectible. Yes, I used to play Munchkin all the time with a good friend of mine. Oh, <laughs> yes. I have some of these. I picked them up from the guy who actually designed them at um, BrickCon. I think it was BrickCon. Uh, but I don't have them in these colors. All the ones I have are green. So now I've got some different colors. And I did not have this boar's head. At least I think that's what that is. That is super cool. Yes. Um, I was classic Italian trained in fencing. When I saw this guy, I had to have one. 
but I saw you could use live steel as well. I figured you could have one as well. It's not in your colors, but I'm sure you can fix that if you want. I do indeed have the technology necessary to change the colors of something. Oh! <laughs> it is indeed a little Lego fencer. That is super cool. Uh, and actually, um, I mean, my fencing jacket is white. Well, yeah, my fencing jacket is white. Um, and then I've got the, the metallic lame for electric. That is super cool! Yes, that will go with my collection of awesome minis that I have been sent. This board game is going in my board game collection. I didn't know this even existed. That is super cool. 1999. Very, very cool. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Next. All right. See what's going on over here. This one looks fancy. It's a, it's a, it's a, a bag of half darts. Why have I been sent half darts? I'm suspicious. What do we have? Oh, good lord. Oh, I, wouldn't, I didn't expect this to get here so soon. So this will be getting its own review video, you guys. Uh, Captain Xavier, I wanted to give you a quick shout out for all the great work you've done for the Nerf community, especially with regards to the crew auxiliary. Several members of our local Nerf group, EP Nerf, have already signed up as members and are looking forward to representing the auxiliary at Penn State in April. The crew auxiliary has the potential to have a great impact on our hobby, both in pulling Nerfers together and promoting a sense of goodwill amongst the community. That was, in fact, the goal. Uh, we all appreciate all the work you put into the Nerf community and the positive attitude you have brought to it. We need more people in the community like you. Thank you for all that you do. Ben, 498 Nerf. He has sent me a Foxfire. Oh, look at that. Ah, run down. Impact 498. In my colors, that is ridiculously cool. Comes with a magazine. Half dart. It's essentially a half dart strife. Um, but the thing about the, the Foxfire setup, if you're not aware, it is in fact a modular system. So you have the flywheel segment, the um, magwheel segment, and then the back end segment all are separate parts and you can replace them with different um, you could put a full dart magwell and it would fire full darts just as well as it fires half dart oh dear lord that is amazing oh yeah 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 that's getting a video oh and that's getting some X strike on it and oh ho, ho, ho. that is glorious Love, so looking forward to doing a video on that. Thank you so very, very much. That, that is cool. That is just too cool. Yes. Oh, it's so lovely. I have the coolest fans. The coolest fans ever. Let's take a look at what we have from Idaho. From Daniel Rao. Who has, I believe it was Daniel Rao, who has sent me, yes, Daniel Rao sent me many a thing before, and I'm hoping, um, Easter. I'm going to be heading home to visit the gnome during Easter, and I will be, I'm planning to drive, so I will hopefully be able to stop in Lewiston and say hello, and actually meet you and have lunch or something. Captain Dick. I know these boxes always find you well, and I'm sure this one is no different. Uh, a few more things for you. First, I found another blaster for Canada Take a K26. If you drive fire this blaster, which I did because I found it already loaded, uh, it felt like it was weaker than a jolt. But put a dart in it, and it's amazingly better. You can keep the blaster after for whatever you would like. Next, there's a Spider-Man blaster with the cartridges for Canada Take a K26. This blaster can go... I would like back if you can send it together with the Nerf pen I sent you before. Okay, I'm going to have to have a whole episode just from stuff you've sent me. Next, I have a slingshot with some rockets that I know you collect about as much as Titan rockets. 
Interesting. Lastly, I have some more radios for you. I was all I was able to get together some other radios that I will be keeping for myself, so I figure since I've given you a few of the ones I had before, I knew where I could send these ones to. I was caught for a second when I watched your first day video and you showed the Nerf radios and said you would find a place for them. I was like, I sent you radios. What are you, you going to do a lot better than those? I realized that you may have forgotten and just figured they were fun to have, which I've thought about getting for that same reason. Anyway, enjoy. Um, yeah, the, the Nerf ones I planned to use not for like serious squad work, but more for um, a mission a game type where you have to radio another person with the instructions to defuse something that vaguely looks like an explosive device. Um, and I wanted it to be as poor quality as possible to make it a little bit more difficult. Um, the ones that you sent me will probably end up getting issued to officers and NCOs and whatnot. What do we have? Oh, we have an I the Iron Man. Good Lord. Ha <laughs> ha. This is the one. It sounds like like it's got nothing. I'm very curious. Very curious. I think I might even have had one of these at one point. But I know I haven't done it in K26 yet. So, yeah. We're definitely going to have to have a, uh, a series just from stuff you have sent me. Here we have the Spider-Man blaster. But now I actually have cartridges for it. Well, I don't know what this is all about, but I like it. Looks saucy. I do like having lots of random tiny rockets. So those, that's, that's neat. More radios. Radios for days. Radios for days. Oh, more than one cartridge. Lovely. Oh, and it comes with a belt that holds the cartridges. Even better. Batteries. I don't know if these batteries are any good. Apparently you can also just use a boatload of double A's. Um, I'm sure you can say it. We are the coolest fans. You are the coolest fans. I now have a full dozen matching Motorola radios. So that is absolutely amazing. What are these for? Where do these go? What's this? What, what do? What am? What was? Oh, I see. All of the batteries and all of the land. Awesome. Awesome. More awesome. You were awesome. Awesome. All right. All right. We're going to take a look at this one. Dubious. Well, I had originally planned to deliver this in person, but then the snow... Apocalypse happened and I blew my head gasket on my truck so this didn't reach you prior to your birthday Looks like you had a good one. Enjoy some other last-minute additions. Oh captain my captain Yeah, that was a, a bummer that we didn't manage to meet up the, the snow would have murdered us all Chalo, I got I've got to say I'm a big fan and Not the ceiling type. Oh, I see <laughs> Okay, okay. I'll keep the bad puns to a minimum. And the feels as well. I'll say this. You are doing it right. Keep being you. We all joined the auxiliary because of who you are and how you do it. Okay, enough feels. On to why we're all here. Nerf and Gummies. The box. Most everything has a note. A couple of items I didn't think needed explaining. The rest, well, you'll see. Happy birthday. Sky B. Auxiliary symbol. Didn't I already get something from Sky B? How many... I know. I know there was. Too much stuff. Shout out to Angus Blackstreet. I lost a bet. He drools. Or was it rules? Meh, whatever. Angus Black Sheet. Black Sheet? Black Sheet. All right. Shout out to Angus Blackstreet. All right, what do we got? We've got packing material. Just what I always wanted. <gasps> Good Lord. Found this at... An off-brand Goodwill replaced the batteries, thought it might sound good, ha, was wrong. Yeah, leave off. Spent a buck on it. Well, sir, it was a buck well spent. <laughs> because I did not have one of these, and I, I missed out on getting it, and now I have it. There's a... Yeah, there it is. 
and that sounds horrible. But, as you'll see, it's in my colors, and it's a zombie strike bayonet, and it's fantastic! And now I have one, and that makes me happy. That sounds terrible, and I love it. Aha! It works! Add it to the collection. Use it in games. Have fun. I'm up to, like, ten of these now. And I do plan to do, you know, multi... Yep. It works. We're all gonna die. Now, I never have too many of these. For diagnostic and repair, it doesn't cycle through all of its cylinders with the pump grip. It does with the string catch. I found it with the guts apart. I put it back together best I could, but they don't have a song for blasters like they do for people. The Oh, leg bone connected to the shin bone. Yeah, yeah. No. Yep. So it looks like it's missing the part that indexes the cylinder after it fires. That shouldn't be too hard, and that actually would be a good one to diagnose because it's got the same internals as a strong arm, which is a very popular blaster. Happy birthday, JLo! Keep doing what you're doing! Did he send me money? The madman, he did. He sent me cash. Ten dollars. That is awesome. Thank you. I will buy myself something nice. <laughs> it was so young. Ha, da, da, da. This badly corroded. I pulled it out of out the contacts and soaked in baking soda and vinegar. Light brush with a brass brush and good as new. Well, almost quite better than before. I got it from a parts blaster. I'm sure you can guess which one. Uh, Add it to the collection for parts for the makerspace. Yeah, this is a. Vulcan's battery tray. And yeah, those leads look like they led a rough life, but they look like they should work now. Excellent. Heat shrink. Sweet. A whole bag of long heat shrink. Super cool. Some six round cylinders. What do we got over here? Oh, yes, sir. This model has the one I grew up with. Its pump is a little anemic, but I'm sure if you felt inclined, you could fix it up. For some reason, I found it without screws. Hmm. Definitely needs some work, but work can be done. What do we got here? Diagnostic and repair. Can it take a K26? Loner for wars? I can flip between two because I'm a flip furry. Ha <laughs> ha, I'm funny. Why are you no laugh? Great joke's wasted. Hmm. Yup, we can take a look at that one, see if we can figure out what's wrong with the mechanism. There's a couple of blasters that have that similar mechanism. I'm fairly certain there shouldn't be something rattling around inside. That may have something to do with it. Ooh! A four-round absolver. I don't think I've made a four-shot one for ire yet. I like it. That's that's what's gonna happen to that. What is that? Gummies! Uh -huh. Here is my favorite gummy. Some like it, some don't. I figured I'd share what I like with the man who shares what he loves with the world. Ooh, Twister nibs. I do like Twizzlers. And I do like a good dense licorice. So, yeah. Oh, look. Oh, jeez. Suspicious. Doing this. Jalo, this is the true birthday gift. The rest were all fakes. Well, it was going to be a Christmas gift, but time being what it is, excuses, another excuse, dog ate my, another excuse, blah, blah, blah. So finally, here we are. We've talked about it over email, but you haven't seen the finished product. And without any more from me, here it is. Go ahead and open it. Merry birthday. Angus Blacksheet says to say, congratulations, you're one year closer to having a beautiful bleached bone bod like mine damn dirty skeleton anyway have fun sky bee and angus black sheep i don't know who these guys are but they sound awesome and i wish to meet them someday 
All right, what do we got going on here? It's a box! He got me a box! A bottle opener, because Tablero, if you are not familiar with it, is in fact a drinking game. Now, of course, I don't drink, but that, oh, I don't drink alcohol. Doesn't mean I can't drink other stuff. I don't? Oh, okay, okay. I think I see what's going on here. That's the one. Okay, I knew that name sounded familiar. Okay, let's... Oh, Lord have mercy, would you look at that. That is cool. That is really, really cool. It's interesting that the, the X is offset from the line. Uh, it, it, it definitely fits better that way. That's really, really cool. And then on the other side, the crew. Oh, that is so cool. That is so very, very cool. I played Tablero many moons ago in the Empire of Adria. It was a popular game there, and it's also popular in the pirate community. I've made a, a chainmail Tablero board for a friend once. I will have to uh, challenge her to a duel on my new board, which I haven't played in so long, and she probably does still. I will get absolutely wrecked, but that is gorgeous. Check that out. You guys, God, you guys are cool. I don't deserve you. You are amazing. I'm going to put this somewhere safe. All right, I'm going to open this one next because I know what the last one is and I'm really excited about it. This is from one of my younger sisters for my birthday because she always sends me the coolest. Oh, Lord. Yes, she does. It's the Lego Once Upon a Brick pop-up book. Tragically, the tape tore the box a little bit, but that's okay. Is that what's in here, or is there other stuff? Looks like there's all manner of other stuff in here. Mostly that, apparently, though. Oh, check, we have some of the, uh, the Lego tape. I have a little bit of that. And there's a note. Hey, bro, happy belated Valentine's birthday. I hope you like the Lego project. It looks... Looked too cool to resist. I look forward to seeing you build it. Love, Diara. That is awesome. She sends me the coolest Lego pretty much every year. That is amazing. The fact that it, it, it's a pop-up book made entirely out of Lego. That is just cool. And that's a lot of Lego because apparently it's several different possible setups. Oh, that is going to be fun to build. Oh yes! Oh yes! Absolutely awesome. Thank you so much, Tiara. All right. As if all this hasn't been awesome enough, last but not least, we have this package sent to me by Nick Groskoff. I'm sure I'm mispronouncing that. Hey, Chalo, hopefully the weather has not had too much effect on this through the shipping process. I included a couple of prints of some of my older pieces just for good measure. Not sure if you are uh, a fan of Ghostbusters <laughs> or Pantera, but I had a few of these on hand, so I thought I'd include them. I have an agreement with the person who originally commissioned me for the Ghostbusters one to not sell prints of it, which is the reason it is in black and white and not full color, so this one is basically a one-off just for you. I think the black and white one gives it uh, a cad film noir feel, kind of feel. Anyhow, Nick Basque, Darth Nick. My daughter Lydia is a huge fan of your channel and thinks it's really cool that you're sending this that we're sending this off. She's 10 and thinks you're a straight up rock star. So she says hi. Well, say hi back because that is really really cool. All right. What do we have? We have that. He 
painted me. This man painted me. And it's one of the uh, recruitment posters. Uh, it got the, we took the original picture and turned it into a recruitment poster. I need to get it added to the uh, the roster of ones that I do at the end of videos because I just need to make a, a quick short of it. So it'll definitely be the one for this video. And that is getting framed and put on my wall because that is absolutely awesome. Let's take a look at the other prints. Oh, ho, ho. Yeah, yeah, look at that. I was a huge fan of Ghostbusters growing up because it's ridiculous and fantastic. Uh, <laughs> and that that is pretty awesome. I have no idea who this is, though. But I can't imagine that matters because it's still awesome and it's still getting framed and going on my wall. Along with this. When I someday have my proper and correct nerd cave with all of my nerd stuff and gaming and that is just awesome. The crazy eye. I love that he captured the crazy eye so very, very well. And the pointy thumb. Oh, that is, that is amazing. You guys, you guys, you guys are awesome. And you are the reason that I continue to do all of this because... You are so awesome, and it inspires me to try to be as awesome as you all seem to think I am. I think I'm doing a good job. Anyway, this, once again, you've outdone yourselves. Such amazing stuff. The, the Tablero board, the paintings, the gifts, the just... Gah! I'm, I'm verklempt. I, 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 I'm speechless. Anyway. I've got the curator coming over to work on a blaster, so I should probably get going. You all are awesome. Thank you ever so much. If you want to have your question answered, put it in the comments of this video. If you want to send me stuff, mailing address is in the description. You guys are amazing. Bangarang!